Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. It's the day that the Lord has made. The rejoicing and the gladness day. Yeah. Our lesson today is lesson number 10. Coming from the book of Romans 8, 18 through 30. Our subject is freedom for the future. Focus is rejoice and hope in future. Freedom while you're doing trials. How many know there's going to be trials and tribulations in this life? Amen. As long as we live, we're going to have to go through something, that right? Mm -hmm. Every day is not going to be hunky dory. Every day is not going to be like a bed of roses. Nobody ever promised us that, but when you read the word, we'll find out that because he went through, guess what? Trials and tribulations, we're going to have to go through them too. Amen. Amen. Bible says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Sometimes you feel like the life is just not giving us a, a real good uh, bed of roses. Mm -hmm. We feel like sometimes that uh, things are going on that we have no control over. Sometimes we feel like God is not there. Not right. But I want you to know that he's always there. Yes, yes. And uh, there is freedom in our future. Although we have to struggle down here sometimes in this life. But after a while, all struggling is going to be over with. You know, when we, when we stand before him and be able to enter into his kingdom. That would be a glorious day. It said, what God has prepared in heaven for his children cannot compare with the earthly existence they are experiencing now. It's understandable why a person would feel hopeless and sad when a loved one dies. There is an illness, stress about finances, or other personal concerns. Paul suggests that we can find joy amid difficulties because we have a living hope. And we do have a hope. And you know what? That, that keeps us living. That keeps us going from day to day because we know that we have a hope in him. Yeah. And all of this stuff that we're going through is going to be over after a while. Mm -hmm. You know, if we say after a while, in a little while, we don't know how long that's going to be. You know, we might not be able to be here when the rest of when he comes back. But we, we might be dead, sleeping out of grave. But we all going to see him. Oh, yeah. When Christmas come into the fullness of sonship, they get a taste of heavenly fruit that whets the appetite for more of what is to come eventually. But the final coming to the heavenly home and receiving all the benefits of being in God's family is yet to be experienced. We just don't know what God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I'm telling you, we go through sickness, we go through uh, finance problems. I mean, every, every time you turn around, there's a problem. There's something going on in life. But that's because we're in this earth. And you know, the spirit on the inside, it moans and groans. Sometimes you get lonely. You get lonely for the Lord. Amen. I, I don't know if you feel like that, but I get, I get like that sometimes. Sometimes I just, uh, it's, uh, it's something that's missing on the inside. While the spiritual soldiers are in the thick of this earthly battle, God has not left his army to fight alone. He gives the greatest weapon in his uh, uh, Assyria. Arsenal, the Holy Spirit, and, and and truly, He has left the Holy Spirit, and that's our weapon. That's right. You know, He's our God. He's our everything. Yes. When the suffering can't uh, can't pray at their lowest point, God reminds the helpless, "I'm here." Hmm. He comes to in the person of the Holy Spirit who meets the deepest inner lonely, loneliness, emotions, desires, and thoughts of the heart, even when. <laughs> Mother and father is not around, sister and brother, loved ones not around, guess what? And, and you're going through loneliness and sometimes people don't understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and your emotions that you have to go through sometimes and the sadness and the hurt and the pain that you go through. Sometimes folk don't understand that. Right. No. And sometimes you don't want to no. tell nobody about it. Mm -hmm. Because guess what they're just going to say that you're just complaining. You just keep it to yourself, but know that God knows what's going on. That's right. Yes, he the is. third person of the Trinity can, can shape a, a human's word uh, to God to be in harmony with his will. God is sovereign, yes. and he's able to manage everything that happens in life. Mm. He can bring it all together, causing it all to turn out for good in the end. Mm. Individuals can see this promise unfold because of their love for God. They are now confident of their purpose in this life. The Creator conceived this plan for each life long before he brought the earth into existence. He knew us even before he uh, uh, formed the earth. Yeah. God knew us. You know, he brought this into to existence, uh, you know, 
he he conceived this plan. God had a plan for everything. That's right. Don't think that it, things is happening in this world that God don't know about. It. That's right. It's all in His plan. You know, and, and uh, but He's going to take care of His own. Yes. The Father selects the, the characters and lays out each chapter. Then He is in the middle of the story, making sure each scene goes according to His plan. And the ultimate goal of each life is to become like Christ. We yield our inner uh, will. He shapes and molds us. I mean, and a lot of times we need to let God shape us. That's we, right, let, man. we need to let That's Him right, mold us. I, some, sometimes we say we need to go back down to the Potter's house. A lot of us need to be molded all over again. That's right. You know, because sometimes we get out of shape. Yeah. You know, and sometimes yeah. we, we, we're not doing the things that God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to be molded and we need to be shaped all over again. So, we're going to talk about this freedom for the future. Uh, Let's talk about patiently waiting on God's plan. Romans 8, 18 through 21. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth the comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Well, that's when we talked about uh, freedom uh, from sin, from our sin, how, to, how, how we could get free from the sin, uh, which comes in three phrases. Uh, first, we, we are immediately free from the penalty of sin because Christ took on our punishment. He took it upon himself. Yeah. Then, as we walk in the spirit and grow in faith, we gain increasing freedom over the power of sin in our lives. Ultimately, when we leave this life, we have the great hope of being freed from the very presence of sin forever. Yeah, sin's going to be wiped away with. Yeah. You know, when Jesus comes back, it's going to be here until he comes. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't, it's no use in us saying, uh, do this or do that. You know, people are going to do what they want to do. Sin is going to be here until Jesus comes back. Yeah. Then when he comes back, he's going to take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the final thing. When we walk in the spirit, and not in the flesh, we can have, have victory over sin in our lives. But living in this fallen world brings us suffering. Yes. And we have to suffer sometimes. Yes. Because this is a fallen world, saints. Yes. This world has, uh, it, it, it's, it's fell. Yet we have a future hope in those, uh, those times, knowing that one day the Lord will set all things right. Yes. I mean, that's our hope. That's what we look forward to. That's why we're living to live again. I mean, because we know that one day, the Word tells us that. If you believe in the Word, guess what? You believe in Him. I mean, He tells us that one day everything's going to be set right. Our present suffering uh, will pale in comparison to the glory of that, that uh, will be revealed in us. Suffering for Christ gives the hope of blessings in this life and the hope of glory to come. Like I said, sometimes you just got to go through it. Sometimes you wonder why you go through your sickness all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. why is it that I'm sick just about all my life? Why is it that I'm I'm have to suffer down here? And but you, if you look at the uh, the old patriots in the Bible, a lot of them suffered. Yeah, suffered. And Paul, Paul was one that suffered most greatly. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, when he tells his story of what he had been through, we ain't been through nothing. Yes. I mean, a lot of times we go through a little pain or or a little disappointment down here. You know. Yeah. But well, we ain't never been beat over and, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, uh, shipwrecked and all that stuff like Paul was, you know, and beat 39 la uh, lashes on his back and stuff like that. We haven't had to go through that. Although our ancestors, some people have had to go through that, but we've never had to suffer like that. Yeah. And I thank God for it. When sin comes into the world, it also brought God's curse on his creation that continues today. Yeah. See, because of Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. hello, yeah. when they sinned in the garden, see, they brought this curse. Yeah, about right. the curse on the whole world today, and it's going to be like that until Jesus comes back. Right. Because you know when when man uh, disobeyed God and uh, when Adam disobeyed Him, guess what? He said man was going to have to work. Yeah. See, Adam didn't have he didn't have to do anything from the beginning. No. You know, the only thing he had to do was just uh, go. And you could get the fruit off the tree and everything. Didn't have to work for anything. But when he sinned against God yeah. and ate what the fruit that God had told him not to eat, yeah. him and Eve, guess yeah. what? Blaming each other, yeah. God put a curse on them, yeah. and He told man that you're gonna sweat, uh, you're gonna work for the sweat of your brow. Yeah. 
until the day that, that he comes back again. Woman, shall, uh, uh, when she has a baby, that's why it's so hard for a woman to have a baby. Mm -hmm. We have to go through pain and agony, right. you know, when, when, you have, when you conceive mm -hmm. because of the sin that was brought on in, in the garden. However, even as he was pronouncing his curse, God proclaimed great hope through the seed of the woman. Mm -hmm. Jesus would crush the enemy's head and one day deliver creation from the cause of sin. In other words, you know, when the devil deceived Eve, he told him that from now on you will crawl on your belly mm -hmm. and you will eat the dust. Mm -hmm. And that's where a snake is. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, to, you have to hit the head of a snake to kill it. Mm -hmm. You know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. You have to crush the head. Mm -hmm. And when a snake bites you, he bites you from the, from the heel. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll strike at your heel. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is a curse that was given. And it's going to be like that until Jesus comes back. Our hope and eager expectation is that everything will be set right for humanity as well as for all God's creation. The chains of corruption and decay will be broken when the glory of God is ultimately manifested in his children. Amen. We won't have to be bound down no more. Yeah. That's right. You don't have to feel like uh, in this corrupt world, yeah. things that we're going through, all this decay, yeah. all this is going to be broken yeah. when he comes back. Amen. So we have to go through just a little while. Right. You know, just a little suffering yeah. Yeah. in this life. Mm -hmm. You know, and we think that it's a long thing, but to suffer 70 years has nothing uh, compared to eternity. Amen. Amen. I'd rather suffer 70 years then, then think about Amen. suffering for eternity. Yes. Amen. And then because Amen. guess what? There's going to be a lot of people going to suffer mm. when it comes to eternity. Yeah. Because guess what? They don't have the heart right. Yeah. They don't have the heart fixed with God. And guess what? They're not, they're not uh, uh, doing what they, that they should be doing. We talked about that. We're seeing a bell of much. Yeah. But grace, guess what? It abounds much more yeah. than sin. Yeah. But there are so much sin. How you, when you cut the TV on, mm. oh, that's all oh. you can see. Right. You know, you, you, you can't watch, you have to go back to the old movies, yes. get yep. the cowboy movies, yes. and, 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 and movies in order to see a good movie. Yeah. Because everything now yes. is about sex, yes. everything yes. is about drugs, yes. or everything is about money. Yes. You know, those three things yes. makes TV. Yes. Yes. It makes TV, and, that's, and it's feeding our children. Yes. That's how I talk. See, when we were coming up, we didn't have that. Oh. Uh -uh. Oh. <clears throat> We have black and white TV. Yeah. And guess what? At 12 o'clock, it went off anyway. Yeah. You didn't sit up all night long and watch no TV. Amen. Because at 12, the TV was off. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and not only that, but we, we watched Amos and Andy. Yeah. And stuff like that, you know, we're, we're in a lot of cussing. That's feeding our children. That's feeding their spirit. That's why children are like they are today. Because parents are not watching what the children are, are, are looking at on TV or on these computers. Yes. You see these kids on these computers all the time. Guess what? They're learning sin. Yeah, they are. You know, you you were you were brought up like that, but you're learning it yes. from your neighbor or you know your little friends or, or TV and everything else. It's not teaching them right. That's, That's right. why it behooves us when our children are. Learning. We got to teach them. That's yeah. right. Although they might stir away, yeah. but guess what? The word is going to be on the inside, and after a while, God will yes. jerk slack in them, and He'll bring them back. Mm -hmm. But God has a plan, and we're patiently waiting for that plan that God has. I mean, everything is already laid out. He knows exactly what's going on. Amen. Don't think that he's asleep. A lot of people just wonder if he's sleeping or if he sees what. God, do you see what we're going through? Yes, he sees what we're going through. He knows what we're going to go through even before we go. I mean, God knows all about it. So, you know, everything is going to work out in the end if we just hold on for a little while longer. It's not going to be that long. Hey Amen. We think that 70, 80 years is a long time. It's not really that long. Mm -hmm. I never thought that I'd catch up to be 70. Uh, I, I never thought that I would live to we, we thought the 70 was really, really old. Mm -hmm. You know, because I remember when my, when my daddy turned 40. <laughs> when my daddy turned 40, my, my, my older sister said, Daddy, you're so old. <laughs> you know, you're so old because we were young and yeah. we thought that yeah. 40 yeah. was really old. Yeah. But when you get 40, you think 40 ain't right. so old in that age. 40, and when you get 70, it ain't so old as the rest of You know, because that time, listen, time waits for nobody. That's right. And it slips right up on you if you're yeah. not ready for it. So, you know, uh, uh, Jesus is on his way back. Yes, yes. There's a time limit in God's plan. Yes. He has a time limit, and after a while, he's coming back yes. for his church without yes. spot or blemish. So we got to wait on him. Wait on him. And know that God is still here with us yes. and that he'll never leave. He said, I'll never leave you 
nor will I forsake you. Yes. Yes. No, I'm always with you. Mm-hmm. So even when we think that he's not with us, he is. Yeah. You know, because guess what? If he wasn't with us, you wouldn't have woke up this morning. Okay. Say that. Amen. Say you that. wouldn't have woke up this morning. You wouldn't have the activities of your limbs yes. if he wasn't with you. And even if you don't have the activity, you still woke up. That's right. Amen. Come on in. Amen. Amen. You still woke up. So, yes. so God is always with us. He's always. He said, "I'll never leave you." No. And I, I believe that yes. that He'll never leave us, no matter what we go through. Yes. That's right. You know, and it's going to be some hard times. Yes. But you know, every day is not it's not going to be a disaster. No. You know, there's going to be some good times. Yes. Sun will shine after a while. Yeah, it will. Amen. Anybody? Let's talk about prayerfully waiting on God's plan. Romans eight twenty two through twenty seven. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the spirits, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our body, for the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Amen. Amen. All creation currently suffers under the painful weight of sin. All creation does. Yes. This includes God's people. As with all creation, Christians also groan inwardly as we await the uh, culmination of our adoption, Mm -hmm. which will be the redemption of our bodies at the resurrection. There's a a loneliness Mm -hmm. when it comes to Christianity. Mm -hmm. There's a loneliness that's on the inside of us, uh, you know, that that, uh, that, uh, needs to be fixed. We long for him. We, yeah. our, 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 our spirit man groans for him, you know, because guess what? It's missing him. Yeah. Our spirit man wants to be connected back with him. And, and, and uh, uh, that inwardly, we we'll await the, uh, for our adoption in him, you know, and, and that's a ship that is firmly anchored, can weather uh, uh, the fierce storm. So too can God's people who firmly hope in his promises stand against the fierce attacks of those who hate the Lord and his people. So that when people come against us, yeah. and we do have enemies, mm-hmm. sometimes you got people that don't like you, they just don't like you. Mm-hmm. They don't even know nothing about you, but they don't like you. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes folks just look at you and just see you, and they, <clears throat> they form opinion about you right then, Judy. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we have a hope in the promise. Yes. You know, uh, that even when people are against us, uh, God is still with us. Yes. Amen. This hope that steadfastly anchors the soul is not in what we currently have and can see, for we do not hope in what we, what our uh, five senses can already affirm for us. We do not hope that he provided the way of salvation and forgiveness of sin that already happened two millennia ago on the cross. However, we do hope and wait with eager expectation for the redemption of our bodies one day. Mm-hmm. Because one of these days we're going to be changed. That's right. Amen. We're going to put on a brand new body. Yes. See, these old bodies here are decaying. Mm-hmm. Yes. It gets it gets tired sometimes. Even when we're in service or in worship, we can be in the spirit. And guess what? As long as you're in the spirit, guess what? You got some energy. That's yeah. right. But when we come out of the spirit, yeah. these old bodies start to ache. Yeah, they, they, they start to ache and they start to hurt. See, uh, these these bodies are, are are lean. See, the things that I used to do, come on in here. Yeah, I used to could be one of the fastest runners mm-hmm. that it was. Yeah, I, nobody beat me when I was young except Michael Gardner. Yeah, and he was one of the fastest men around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would go up against anybody when it comes to racing. Yeah, and I used to run the fastest that I could. Yeah. But guess what? I can't do that nowadays. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? The, my, my wind pipe uh, won't let me do that. My girl, my legs ain't what they used to be. Sure These knees, uh, they don't work like they used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell that this building is leaning. Yeah. That's a leak in this old building. Yeah. And you know what? And 
and I know that after a while, yeah. you know, I might have to fold this up. Yeah. We're going to fold up this body yeah. one of these days. Yeah. We're going to put on immortality. Yeah. And we're going to take off this corruption and put yeah. on in incorruption. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be with him. Yeah. And then we're, our bodies are waiting for that day yeah. to be redeemed yeah. back to him. Yes. I, I, I thank God because, you know, he, uh, he lets us go through things. Yeah. And when we go through things, that should strengthen us. Yeah. Amen. That should give our, our spirit more strength. Yeah. See, a lot of times we go through things and we whine about why we're going through it. Yeah. But you ought to thank God. Yeah. Just thank him. Even when things are not good, thank God anyway. See, a lot of people can praise God as long as things are going good. Yeah. As long as I'm up on the mountain springs, I can praise him. Yeah. But when I get down in the valley, I don't know how to call on him. That's when we need to call on him yeah. when we're in the valley. Because guess what? He can hear us down in the valley. Yeah. And guess what? His ear is not stopped up. He hears us when we call on him. And if you call on him, he'll ask you. Yeah. Amen. It's just as simple as that. Yeah. You know, we can praise God as long as everything is going good. Yes. Mm. But when we have just a little thing mm -hmm. that happened to us, mm -hmm. we, we turn away from him. Oh, yeah. We run away from him mm -hmm. when we should be running to him. Yes. But our bodies are waiting for that. Mm -hmm. Because guess, we ain't as young as we used to be. Sure. And we feel this thing on the inside. Yeah. And we know that our time is not much longer. Yes. Amen. But one of these days, we're going to be with him. Days. We're going to pull off this thing. Yeah. We ain't got to have to worry about it no yeah. more. Oh. We'll never have to hurt. Yeah. There'll be no more pain, no more oh. sorrow, no more death, no more graveyards. Yeah. Come on in here. Oh. You ain't got to worry about that. No more hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, got, you don't have to worry about that because yeah. we'll be with him. That's right. Yeah. Every day is going to yeah. be a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on yeah. Here. Every day yeah. is going to be sunshine. Yeah. There's no darkness in That's the end right. of the day. Yeah. Hey, Amen. When we seek Jesus, everything oh. will be all right. Amen. Thankfully, our hope is not in our own strength. Yeah. For we cannot stand alone. And a lot of people think that. Oh, they yeah. think that their hope is, that, that, you know, they got the strength, they can do this, they can do without asking God. Yeah. You might be able to do it, but after a while, you're going to come down. Right. Right. Everything that goes up the ladder without yeah. him got to come back down. Yeah. Come on in. But when we take him up the ladder with us, yeah. or let yeah. him go before us, yeah, yeah, yeah. we know we can say at the top. Come on. That's right. come on. We ain't got to worry about that the devil could cut beef. He could uh, blow his uh, horn. He could, he could try to blow your house down or whatever. Guess what? He can't do nothing no. when we let God go before us. Come on. Right. Amen. Because he will protect us. Oh. Rather, our hope is in the power of God mm -hmm. to whom we can pray and receive the strength we need to prevail. Mm -hmm. This is so even if the cares and sorrows of life are so overwhelming that we do not know what we ought to pray for. Yes. When life's storms seem like uh, they are about to sweep us under. We can cry out to the Lord, knowing that the indwelling Spirit of God will intercede on our behalf. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for. But Amen. guess what? Our, uh, Jesus Amen. is standing there, and he's interceding for us. Yes. And the Holy Spirit, yes. guess what? He prays for us. Yes. A lot of times when you, know, you don't know what to say, guess what? the Holy Spirit will, uh, will speak for you. Yes. And he speaks on our behalf. Yes. And the Lord who knows and searches our heart will answer us in accordance with his good and perfect will. Yes. Amen. See, God knows when we're real, saints. Yes. yes, he does. He knows when our hearts are real. And a lot of folk are trying to play with God. Mm. Amen. And, and, and think they're getting away with it. But we ain't getting away with nothing. You can't play with God. No. No. Amen. Uh, you you got to be real with him. And when we get real with him, I never will forget uh, when, when I, I, I had prayer, uh, when things was going bad in my, in my first marriage. And... and, and I, I wasn't real with him when I was praying. But guess what? Something happened. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my eyes opened up. Yeah. And, and I came to, to two of my uh, prayer warriors and I told them what I wanted. And they said, do you really want that? Yeah. I said, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Then if you want it, we're going to stand on it. Yeah. And begin to pray. And guess what? God saw my heart. Yeah. He yeah. saw my heart and he knew that it was real. And guess what? It wasn't too long after that God answered that prayer. Oh, Come on. Okay. Hey, he answered that prayer. I don't tell me that he won't answer your prayer yeah. when you get real with him. Yeah. If you do right by God, God will always do right yeah. by you. Yeah. Amen. But yeah. some, sometimes we think that we can do any old thing. Yeah. Like I told you on that, we feel like we can do anything and just run to God. Yeah. Amen. And we ain't living for him no kind of way, but when we get in trouble, yeah. we want to call on him. Yeah. Amen. Why don't you call on the one that you, that you got in trouble with? Uh, you know, when, when you were out there and you were doing the things, that, why can't you call on him? Mm -hmm. Call on your God. Yeah. I mean, don't be calling on God. 
Yes. Because you don't want to serve him. You don't want to yes. worship him. Yes. You don't want to give him no kind of reverence. Yes. Amen. But you want to call on him yes. when you get in trouble. Come no. on. No, that's not the kind of God that we serve. Yes. Amen. We got to do something for him. Yes. Because he did it all for us. That's yes. right. Amen. He paid the price for it. That's right. In so doing, we can trust that he will work everything out for the good and his glory. Amen. He'll work it out for us. Yes, he will. He'll work it out not only for us, but for his glory. Yes. Amen. See, he gets the glory. Yes. A lot of times we want the glory. Yes. Come on in here. Yeah, yes. that's right. You know how folk are in the church. <coughs> All right, if you don't pat them on the back and tell them how good they're doing, guess what? They get mad. Uh -huh. And if you don't call the name out about, you know, what they done done, they get an attitude. Yes. Come on in here. Y'all yes, right. Lord. You know it's right. I'm, I'm yes. talking to people on Facebook, too. Yes. You know it's right. Come yes. on. Amen. People, if you don't call the name out, guess what? They get an attitude. Yes. Right. But you ain't got, you ain't getting no glory. Our glory belongs to Him. Right. I don't have to be seen down here. That's right. You don't ever have to call my name down here That's right. about anything that I do. But as long as I know that I'm pleasing Him, yes. He gets the glory. I give Him all the glory because all the glory is due to Him. That's right. Amen. So we are waiting on His. We have to pray and wait on Him because yes. everything is not going to be good in this life, saints. But prayer changes things. That's yes. right. Amen. Yes. When we pray and we pray sincerely, God will hear us. Yes. And he will come to our rescue. Yes. Amen. Yes. Anybody? Amen. That's you know, sister, this thing called Christianity and salvation is a waiting thing. Not a waiting game. It's a waiting thing. Hey, man, David, it's a day that wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. He shall renew their strength. He shall run, mount up his wings of eagles, run and not get weary. And walk and not get tired. Mm -hmm. What I like about what, what he said in this passage of scripture, we don't hope for what we already have. Amen. Amen. We That's claim right. it, but we don't really have it yet. It's in the future. Yes. So because it's been promised to us, the <coughs> finished work of Christ on the cross, we can fix our hope in what he done yes. that we might receive it. So Paul's took one of the writers saying, if I've got it, I don't have to hope for it. Right. So we don't hope for what we already have because hope, what we have, is not hope. <laughs> you know, so as a Christian and a believer on salvation, I have to continue trusting God that he will promise and give me what he has promised. Amen. The Bible said he is true to his word. He's not a man that he should lie. So my hope is in what God has already declared. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about purposely waiting on God's plan. Romans 8, 28 through 30. And we know that on all things God works for the good of those who love him and for who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Yes. Amen. Amen. We can trust that God's plans will ultimately work out for the good, even in trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. for the good of those who love him. I mean, that's what his word says. Amen. Listen, it says, and we know that all things work together for good, for good, for good. to them that love God, and to them that who are called according to his purpose. God has called a many of us. All of us are really called to do something. Yes. Amen. You wouldn't put in this world not to do anything. Yes. Amen. Amen. We were put here to be able to be his disciples mm -hmm. and his servants to be able to tell somebody about him yes. and about what he, he has done. Are you telling anybody about anything about the full gospels? Yes. You know, it, it, I mean, have you talked to anybody in your life? Yes. yes. About the full gospel, about the good things and, and everything about Jesus. Have you told anybody? Do you ever speak to people? You know, a lot of times your conversation is, is a lot of negative stuff. Yes. Or a lot of foolishness when we carry on conversation. But you, do you ever talk about Jesus? Yes. Do you ever talk about the Lord and the things that he's done when you yes. get with your friends? Oh. Amen. Because let's, when you start talking about Jesus to your friends, because you won't have them too long. That's right. If they're not on your side. <laughs> Amen. Because guess what? They don't want they want to hear everything else. We can listen to all kind of gossip and everything that's going on. Amen. But when you talk about Jesus, people don't want to hear about it. No. 
Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, Saints. We're going to hear about it one day. Right. You might not want to hear it right now, but after a while, you're going to hear about it. He, 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 listen, he's faithful though, to those that are called. One of the great purposes of our calling is to proclaim the gospel. Yes. You hear that? Yes. One of the greatest things that we can do here for him is proclaim the gospel. Yes. And we've had enough teaching and yes. preaching to know everybody in this church ought to be able to get up and preach a sermon. That's right. Come on in here. Amen. Everybody, everybody in this church, I'm talking about the other churches. I'm talking about this church. Yeah. Yeah. And you have so much word, yes. you know, that, that's been embedded in you that you ought to be able to get up and say anything. Yes. You ought to be able to get up and, and preach or teach the gospel to anybody. Yes. And the more we are like Jesus by being conformed to his image, the more credible is our testimony for him. Amen. Lord said we want to be like Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> we, we do, we, yeah, we would like to be like him. We like to be in the end. He has made us in his image. But as you say you want to be like, no, I don't think you want to be like Jesus. Amen. A lot of us say that stuff, but we ain't want to be like him. Amen. Because if we did, we would turn from our wicked ways. And we would do the right thing. We would stand up, you know, and, and, and get everything clean in, in our life. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, you want to be like Jesus? I mean, you, you got to have some kind of testimony. You got to walk the walk and talk to talk. Amen. Amen. A lot of people talk to talk, but they can't walk the walk. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I even see preachers that's talking to talk, but they ain't walking the walk. Yeah. Amen. A lot of people in church are not walking the walk. But when we get, when we transform, conform to his, the more credible is our testimony to him. See, you can't testify to nobody doing anything. That's right. That's right. I was talking to my sister just not, just the other, now it's been a few weeks ago when I was down her house. We was talking about it, you know, and, and I know how some people can, can get to you and, you know, they can say things and make you want to go off, you know. And, 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 and she was telling me a little story about an incident that happened. I said, girl, you need to just, ooh, let me handle it for you. I said, I know you can't handle it. <laughs> because guess what? You don't, want your, you don't want your witness to be in vain. That's right. You know, when we get off in sin like that, and see, the devil knows how to attack. He knows how to yeah. come and push your yeah. buttons yeah. to make you get off in sin. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. as soon as you retaliate, yeah. 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 You know, they can go off on you. Yeah. But when you try to go off on them, mm -hmm. the first thing they're going to say, I thought you were saved. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You're supposed to be a Christian. Uh -huh. Well, who, who are you? Yeah. You know, you're supposed to be a Christian. That's the first thing that people will throw up in your face. But although they have, they have come at you in, in a negative way, yeah. they have said things about you and done things to you, but still when you try to say something to them, yeah. You're supposed to be a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I, I made up in my mind, friends. I made up in my mind. I ain't let people worry me. No. You can't. I'm not going to let folk worry me. Because uh, I, 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 some time ago, the Lord let me know, listen, just pray for those folk. That's what you got. Because guess what? He'll do the fighting. Yes. The battle is not yours. No. That's it's right. his. That's so right. when folk are saying all manner of evil against you. Yeah. And doing things that they know is not right. Mm -hmm. Tell God. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He'll fix it. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll bring them back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll make your enemies your footstool. Yeah. Come on, I know that for a fact. Yeah. That has happened in my life. Yeah. He will make when you tell God about it, yeah. he'll fix it. Yeah. And if Jesus can't fix it, uh -huh. nobody. Yeah. Come on in here, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Why Christmas? <laughs> Some of our credibility is worth less than five cents, and we get three cents change back. <laughs> I, I think about your dad. I've always heard this said about Brother Mr. Douglas. You'll never hear him say anything bad about anybody. That was the talk about how he was. I learned it by being around him. I never heard him say anything bad about nobody. So that credit, he, he, he stood under that credit bill. Yes. You could never say you heard Mr. Douglas say this or that about nobody. Yes. Amen. Yes. So our credibility, but it's, it should stand for something. Yes. Amen. 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 Who we are in God should stand for something. Yes. 
Amen. And when it stands for something, folks will listen to you and share the gospel with you. That's right. You're to carry some weight. I never, never heard my daddy talk about anybody or say a bad word in my life. I never heard him curse. Never heard him talk about people. But, uh, you know, we could get that kind of in our spirit, you know, to not let folk bother us to talk. Just because somebody's talking about me don't mean I'm talking about them. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to, it's not an eye for an eye. Yeah. Come on, baby. Yes. The part where you was talking about. I can't understand you taking that. I'm sorry. Uh, the part where you was talking about, uh, where you said, uh, well, basically, when, when, uh, when a person comes at you in the wrong way, and they use the term, oh, I thought you was a Christian, well, I think they use that as an excuse because they know exactly what they're doing while they're doing it. And so when they throw it in your face like that, so it's like, it's how you respond. And if you respond in a positive way and check them in a nice way, they still want to use that as an excuse. And they did it on whatever, whatever they did or said, they did it on purpose just to get a reaction. Yeah. And they use that term, uh, I thought you was a Christian, they're going to continue to use it anyway, but they use it as a Christian get away with what they do. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, sister. The Bible tells us that let our words be seasoned mm -hmm. with grace. We, if we respond in a positive manner, then they'll never bring up that statement, I thought you were. They will know. Because you use grace when you respond. But if you respond in a, in a negative manner, then surely they're going to say, hey, you don't be, because they know you ain't going to be talking like that. Mm -hmm. But the enemy will use people to come yeah, that's to you. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he'll, use, he'll use folk to come. Yeah. Because you know what? And, and, and nine times out of ten, God has a blessing in store for you. Yeah. Yeah. And if we go off and get off into their lane, mm -hmm. we miss our blessing. You know, because it was just right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. You was almost ready to touch that blessing. Mm -hmm. But the enemy saw it. Yeah. So he sent somebody mm -hmm. to in order to block it. Yeah. You know, that's the way he works. That's his techniques. Yeah. He'll send people just to block what God has for you. Mm -hmm. While Christians have different viewpoints on how God chooses those he calls by faith in him, we receive his twofold gift of being justified. See, when he calls us, he justifies us. Mm -hmm. And not only does he justify us, but he glorifies us. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and the old saints say, and, 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 and he, he sanctifies us. Yeah, yeah. And then he sets us aside. Mm -hmm. Amen. To do a work for him. You know, uh, a lot of times when God calls, we need to answer his call. That's right. You know, he's talking every day, but we, we, are, are we answering him? Uh, you know, it's, it, uh, I want to read this. As our passage helps us understand, God calls his people to fulfill his good purposes here in this life. In this life. It's no use in us trying to wait until we uh, get to heaven to try to do something. We don't have to do it then. He wants us to do it now. Right. And down through the ages, people faithfully answered his call. There is no better passage of scripture to see how some of the Old Testament saints answer God's call than Hebrews 11. For instance, Faithful Noah answered God's call to build an ark. Therefore, thereby saving his family and con uh, condemning the world of sin. Faithful Abraham and Sarah answered God's call to leave the land of their ancestors and go to the land of promise. Thereby together starting the nation of Israel. Faithful Moses answered God's call to leave the house of Pharaoh and to live, deliver Israel from an uh, Egyptian bond. With all these great examples, and so many more are found throughout Scripture. God's people are called to lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily besets us and let us run this race with patience yeah. that's set before us. Yeah. I mean, we got to lay aside all of those weights yeah. in order to run. The, you can't run no weight or uh, race with a, a lot of weights on you. That's it. Oh, no. That's you you it. never see no athlete well, uh, bound down with no uh, 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 jackets and all that mm. stuff. I mean, right. they pull off the least thing that happen the least yeah. thing when they get ready to run that race. Yeah. So, you know, like, we, we got our armor on, yeah. but, but guess what? Your armor shouldn't be that heavy yeah. that you can't stay in the race. Yeah. 
Amen. Because uh, uh, we got a race that we will. You got to lay everything else and all this other little petty stuff. Yeah. This little immature stuff. Yeah. You got to lay it aside. Yeah. Amen. And to run this race. Because there is a finishing line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Dutch family, you sing that song uh, at the finishing line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we get to the finishing line, uh -huh. we yeah. got to run until we get there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. In a race, if you run a marathon, yeah. I don't care how long it takes you to come right. to the finishing line. Some of them, guess what, they'll get there real soon. Yeah. But some of them get there hours and hours later. Yeah. But don't stop running. Don't stop running. Make it to the finishing line. Yeah. Yeah. Because at this finishing line, yeah. that's a prize that's waiting for you. Yeah. Right. See, at that finishing line, they get a prize. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it, it, it's a good prize. I'm yeah. sure it is. Yeah. But at this finishing line that I'm talking about, yeah. there's a good prize waiting. Yeah. Yeah. See, we, we, we labored and we tore down here. But guess what? There's a prize that's waiting for us. Right. We got a payday coming. That's yeah. right. After a while. And it's one of the best pays yes, that you can is. ever receive. That's right. Amen. These little checks that you receive down here, they don't mean nothing to you. But at this time, yeah. at this finishing line, mm -hmm. amen, that's a great prize to wait for us. Yeah. Amen. A prize that's where he's going to say, well done, well thy good and thy faithful servant. Yeah. You've been faithful over a few things. You ain't done everything that I told yeah. you, but you've been faithful over a few things. Come on in. Come on. Yeah. Amen. God's going to tell us that. That is the greatest prize. Yeah. That is the greatest thing that we and, and pay that we can ever ask for in life. Yeah. Amen. It's the greatest thing. Yes. And, and that's what we're running, saints. We're running this race with patience. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to run it with. Sometimes I'm telling you, in my life, I ain't talking about y'all. Mm -hmm. In my life, I got to pray hard mm -hmm. because I got to have patience. Yeah. You know, I, I need I need patience because guess what? Folk will try you. That's right. All yeah. the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it sometimes it make your head hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You can get a headache from fit from people. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and you got to be praying. You got to stay on the wheel. I mean, we on the wheel now. You got to stay on it. God's word teaches that although Christians will experience trials and suffering, the suffering is temporary compared to eternal glory with God. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving to us an eternal <coughs> glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what we can see, but what we cannot see. Mm -hmm. Because everything that we see is temporary. That's right. mm -hmm. But what is unseen is eternal. That's, right. yeah. That's what we need to fix our eyes on Him. That's right. A lot of times we need to renew our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Think on heavenly things. Yeah. Think on good things. Yeah. Amen. When people come to you at bed, think on good things. Mm -hmm. Think about something good that you could say or something good that you can do. Amen. It said in 1957, Alice Wine rewrote a famous spiritual song, Keep Your Hand on the Plow, and titled it, Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. Paul and Silas thought they were lost. Dungeons shook and the chains came off. They kept their eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. If y'all know the story, Paul and Silas, how yeah. one of them sang and loved and prayed. Come yeah. yeah. on in here, y'all. Yeah. Hell in the air, Jill. Couldn't get out. Yeah. Had guards all around them. But oh, there's something about prayer. Yeah. When we begin to pray and pray for real, yeah. God hears us. And guess what? One begin to sing, and the other one begin to begin to pray. Yeah. And God heard them. Yeah. Sent an angel down. Yeah. Loose the chains. Mm -hmm. Begin to shake. Mm -hmm. They were free. Keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. Hold on. Hold Freedom's on. name is mighty sweet. Yeah. And soon we're gonna meet. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Hold on. Paul and Silas kept their eyes on the prize of God's mm -hmm. promise of freedom, either here on earth or in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. We should do the same with rejoicing and with hope. Yeah. And then whether we're here yeah. or whether we're in heaven, yes. we should do the same. Keep Amen. your eyes on, on the on prize. Because yeah. I'm telling you, after a while, yeah. payday is coming. coming. God bless you. Amen.